We could probably use a rain. <laughs> This is not an onion or a pineapple field. This is actually our corn here in uh, mid to late July. Obviously, this is a really, really light ground area, really bad spot. The truth is, most of our corn doesn't look like this. I'll go show you a better representation. It's inconsistent, and that's from a couple of different reasons. Number one, it got planted in dry dirt, and some of it didn't germinate because we didn't get it rain right after planting. So that seed struggled to germinate, some of it germinated late, some of it germinated early. The tasseling here is actually relatively even compared to what I've seen in the area. We got some corn that looks decent. We got some corn that looks terrible. We figure we're probably down roughly 20% on yield already at this point. We just started shooting tassels here a few days ago. We're gonna start burning through water a lot faster. Overall, things really still look better than they should for the lack of moisture that we've had. But this week with tasseling and everything, forecasted temps in the 90s, low to mid 90s, and really no rain in the forecast, things are probably gonna shrivel up quickly. We may lose another 20% here in the next 10 days. So we're gonna get what we get. The kernels are on the cobs when you count. We're just gonna have to wait and see what this really develops into. If we don't get any more rain, and we have a disaster crop here. We do have insurance that will step in and say, hey, this is a disaster. You bought in at such and such level to cover a percentage of your crop, and they will kick in. We will get paid uh, on those bushels that we didn't get on the percentage anyway. This year we bought in at 80%. Crop prices were pretty good in February when the prices were set. We're gonna be okay on insurance. It's a very expensive insurance policy that we don't wanna use, but it's like any other insurance when you need it, it's there, that's why it exists. It's there for a reason. What are you chewing on? What'd you find? It does not look delicious to me. To answer a couple other questions I've been getting about it on my other social medias, specifically my Instagram and Facebook, number one, irrigation is not really an option. It's very expensive. Uh, there are some pivot irrigators uh, to the northeast of here, but right around here we generally get enough rain We don't have to worry about irrigating. We don't have a means for irrigation because we typically don't need it The other question I've gotten is can we just take our sprayer out and load that full of water and go over the acres and water our crop that way There are 27,000 gallons of water in one inch per acre of rain that means to cover one acre with one inch of rain, we'd have to fill that over 27 times, okay? I mean, even that sprayer only holds 1,200 gallons in the tank. What? Are you looking for motion detectors, glass break sensors, temp sensors, freeze sensors, perhaps a doorbell camera? You don't have to look any further than Simply Safe. Just last winter, the dog left this door wide open on the shed in the middle of January. Some things got froze out. Luckily, the Simply Safe app detected it and said, hey, the shop is way too cold. I wonder what temperature it is now. Oh, look, it's 84 at the workbench. In fact, I'd kind of like to see if anybody's in the shop right now. Looks like just one idiot making a YouTube video. Hey, Didge, what's your favorite part about the Simply Safe security system? I really like the fact that it has 24 seven monitoring. And if anything happens while you're away, it will alert the police. Anyway, check out the link down below in the description. That is our specific URL. If you're considering ordering anything, please do so through that link. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna help me out. And now back to our normal programming. Simply safe on home. Morning. Morning. I wonder instead of just replacing the nozzle on the end of that hose, we should maybe replace the whole hose. The entire hose? I think so. It's getting a little soft. King's easy. I think it's getting older. If we put a bigger one on, will it go faster? I think it would, it might. Well, the morning's about to get a little bit busier here. We've got some corn hauling out. Dad's filling up a truck right now. We gotta put a new nozzle and hose on there because it's not cooperating real nicely, but we'll get to that. We've got some guys over here taking some measurements behind the grain dryer. We're looking at maybe putting in a different airlock and motor and running some new lines to the exchanger so that that really loud whiny sound you hear on all my videos in the fall 
isn't so loud and whiny this fall. But we'll get to that later right now. I got other guys here to take a look at this other sprayer that we got sitting here that is not gonna be used as an irrigation machine, but instead as a sprayer. So I got Kevin here with Hagee. Am I saying that right? Yep, you're saying it right. He's gonna, he's gonna learn me good on this brand new sprayer. So it's got the new cab on it. Yep. It's an STS-12. STS-12, 1200 gallon. 1200 gallon tank, 120 foot booms. Yep. Got the all wheel steer, which we can turn on and off. We can load it in the front or the side, you said. Yep. It's got exact apply, is that what you're calling it? Exact apply, individual nozzle control. Yep, pulse width modulation, lots of different terms. We'll get into all those fancy terms as we go here. But for now, the first thing we're gonna do is load it up, put some, uh, put some water and some Liberty in it and head out, clean up some more soybeans. Sounds good. Right now it says we're at 615 gallons. Yep. You said it actually has a ball inside the tank? Right. Let's keep track of that. So we're measuring it and this display is talking to the cab display so that at all times we know how much the product we're putting in and then also when it comes off, it comes off the same way. So. Okay. So I don't have to jump in the cab and reset the monitor to say we're full now. Right, right. It just knows what we've got in there. Uh, so what, this is our boom fold functions. We're yep. going to do auto fold, but since we're going to go around it, turn the extensions off. So literally just reach up there and swipe that. Left. This one here? Okay, so A, which is the top. Which is the top. Okay. And then it's like running a PlayStation. Yep. Or cradle down. Yep. And it's going to keep holding it? And keep holding it. You can let go of your index finger if you want to, but you got to hold the bottom. Just lower your center section down. Now you can kind of level the booms out with the two, these here. Yep. Independent levels. So this machine has the ability to not fully unfold and we actually only did the first 60 feet around the field. Now we're moving farther in the field, we're gonna unfold it all the way, go to 120 feet wide. So we're gonna have 180 feet of end rows. So now I gotta do math and figure out where I'm supposed to be here. You're gonna, you're gonna follow your exact planner track. So you're gonna be 12 rows in. I'm gonna be 12 rows in from? From that row, so. But then we'll be overlapping over there. Yep, that's okay. Let section control do its work. So we have made it around our end rows here. We got about 180, 160 feet of end rows. We're gonna set up what they call an auto path now so it will follow the planter's path and kinda, of, you, you can do some stuff with it that I don't even know for sure yet. So I'm, I'm gonna learn along with you. But I got a new a new rider here now, so I've got Howdy. Hunter with. He's gonna be the auto path professional for this, this guided tour. Yes, sir. All right, what do we gotta do? We got our auto path turned on. You tell me. Resume button and Get go. Get the auto. Yep. We're disengaged, part. but it's communicating. Yep, it looks like it. It's a fun machine, and I've got a little bit more that I've got to do with it. Hopefully, I'll get back to that later today because we have a little more water hemp in that field than what I was expecting. But right now, I got to go meet FBN Todd, look at some corn. I'm uh, about an hour and 40 minutes late only, so you know, he was gonna buy me lunch, but not anymore because lunch is long over. It's kind of like I stood him up. We were supposed to meet for a lunch date and I just kind of, I made him, I made him. <laughs> next time, Todd. It's cool in here. How was lunch? It was good. Too I'm only you, a couple hours late. Too bad you missed it. <laughs> I was doing something cool. Okay, yes, hey, geese are cool. Yeah. Did you wear your off-roading pants, Todd? I did, I did, yeah. Watch out for rattlesnakes. There, now we're in some corn. Oh, 
some are just merging. You said there's a little bit of nitrogen shortage right now. Yeah. Which this time of year. You'd expect. Yep. The the length and the and the girth, the width around, has already been predetermined. So yep. from here on out, the weather determines basically how Depth. full it gets. Yep. And it'll start aborting back here. If you get no more rain, we'll start to lose these tip kernels back and back and back and back and back. If we pick up rain, as you asked the question, we'll retain many to most of all these tip kernels. You know we're plenty dry when you can just walk straight through the bottom of a slough. Overall, that field looked pretty good. Now you can see the unevenness, the inconsistency with the tassels and the height and everything. We were out in a decent area. Most of the field is relatively decent, but it's just the inconsistency right now. It's really quiet in the cab. Is it? Really quiet. Like you can feel the airbags or you can hear the airbags and suspension and the cylinders and the steering wheel louder than the engine wow. like there's zero engine noise when it's right. and that did you catch that the door up no it's tight oh, all okay. it has to do is make contact and it closes it itself okay. and it seals itself to make sure that the cab is pressurized you guys are going to get to see a lot more of that sprayer here over the next couple of weeks uh, as I mentioned, I got at least one load to spray out with it tomorrow. And then we've got some soybean aphids that we are going to have to take care of as long as they show up. We're also getting some beetles in the corn this year. So we've got the agronomist checking on that to determine whether or not they think we need to spray some insecticide for them. If that's the case, we may take that buggy out right there and we may spray some insecticide on our 10 foot tall tasseled corn. In some parts of the field, it's only about two feet tall. But Anyway, we might have to spray some full grown corn with that. That'll be interesting. I've never done that before. We've also got some bin floors to clean out. Here you can see Onyx and I were hard at work cleaning this one out. You could dang near have a slumber party in here. It's kind of nice. But we know at least two of these small bins are gonna get filled with soybeans this year. So we are gonna empty this one out here as well and make this one just as nice as the last one you saw. But it is our second slowest time of the year behind January and February for us. And so with that, I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys saying you want to see more of the race stuff. What we do on the dirt track racing between Onyx and I and car owner Corey and the whole crew. So for those of you who know about our second channel called Between the Rows, we're going to link it down below. We are going to do some, some videos this week of our racing. Keep it between the rows. Thanks for watching.